I'm Dan Probanik with Chagrin River Outfitters, and welcome to our Angler Profile Series. Today, we're, we're sitting down with Jeff Gay, and we're going to ask him a few questions about fishing. Um, Jeff, rumor has it, you spend a lot of days on the water. Um, give or take a day or two, how often do you think you're out there? Oh, geez. Um, Dan, I'd have to say 150 mm -hmm. to 200, mm -hmm. probably, in some years more. but. Probably more than that because a lot of times I'm just on the water casting, yeah. practicing my skill, you know, which I think is just still on the water. But yeah, probably somewhere 150, 250, something like that. A lot of these days, um, you know, obviously, I think you're probably best well known as right now as a obviously a steelhead angler, right, swinging flies, that kind of stuff. But I, I you do a lot more, don't you? I do. Um, I think everybody. I have a passion for the migratory fish and swinging flies and that the last 15, 16 years. But it's been. Um, Fly fishing is a journey, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. That's why we why we get into it because you know it's salt waters. There's so much, and I'll never master any of them. Right. But you know, I'm hoping to like get better at each one as I you know expand my horizons. Absolutely. Um, so migratory species, swinging flies. What what draws you to that? Why do you think you're so passionate uh, about that type and style of fly fishing? Um, it's not the size. It's um, it's that they're not um positioned in one position they're migratory that river's a conveyor belt mm -hmm. and you know how it is you, you just when you think you got them figured out you go back there and they're gone because they're moving up river and moving up that river and things change and water temperatures and the rivers change faces so it's a it's that challenge too plus it's something where i have my roots that's where i started sure you know you would think 40 some years later i wouldn't want to do it but it's, i still have a passion for it yeah absolutely yeah Absolutely. Going back to, um, uh, you know, swinging flies, when you are on the water, you know, and you're out there fishing, and whether you're having a good day, great, you know, maybe it's a slower day, whatever, you're approaching a run, you know, that has been good to you in the past, you know, and, and this may or may not be, or, or very well may be, your best chance of the day at, at getting a grab or two, hooking a fish or two. Um, what are you thinking about? Like, what are you, before you make your first cast, before you step in, start casting, start fishing, what do you want to make sure is right? Sure, you know, so the, the key component, first off, is um, the water clarity. Because mm -hmm. um, that could be a, a river system that's high and clear. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a system that is, you know, low and clear. Sure. So I have to have, the, they have to see the fly before they can get it. Yeah, good um, point. Yeah, and then also too is the water temperature. Mm -hmm. Migratory fish are real sensitive to water temperatures. You know, like our migratory trout, as you know, it's just one day it's, you know, 48 degree water temperature and next thing you know you wake up and you're chipping ice off the guides and there's slush on the sides of the river, you know, yes. from the night before. So yep. it, it makes it tough. So I evaluate that and that evaluates my pace down the run, mm -hmm. how, how aggressive I can be. So. If the water was what we call what maybe perfect, I would say maybe 18 inches of visibility, maybe going into two foot. I have to say, if you can see your boots in two foot, like knee deep, yeah, that's a good judge that I can pick up the pace as long as the water temperature is over, say, 38 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the magic, you know, pivotal point is when I approach a run is if it's below 38 degrees, I'm going to give it a couple good whacks. Like I'm going to make a cast, and then I'm make another angle cast and then I'm gonna make a step. Mm -hmm. Even if I have customers out or somebody beginner or even or excellent casters or fishermen, it's just a matter of mathematics of putting that fly in the zone long enough because they can see it or to get it. Um, as it gets clearer and those fish are getting more aggressive and um, then I'll pick up the pace. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you know that. And then first, when, you know, that after we evaluate those is you're gonna to have to evaluate basically two is I think a lot of people underestimate, you know, how many fish could be in the system or how many aren't. Right. 
our expectation could be like, you know, now with the instant gratification with Instagram, everybody sees all these pictures on, you know, the, oh, they're biting today, they're all in the river. Well, yeah. that might not be the case. Could be old pictures or whatever. So, fished all day for that one, one fish too. One yeah. fish too. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's a good day as one fish. I but, agree. You know, yeah. but um, yeah, and then always start the head of the run regardless. Okay. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, you know, if I know the water temperature is a little, you know, colder, mm -hmm. I could probably skip the head of the run. But a, a classic example is me and you just experienced here in the last couple of days fishing that these fish were in positions that they probably shouldn't have been with the water temperature, but they were. Yes, they were very much so, very much so. Um, yeah, so now, you, like you said earlier, just uh, you think you get them figured out and you don't. And it's that kind of that puzzle that keeps you going back for more and yeah. always learning, always pursuing just learning more and more about them and their habits and what they're doing. Yeah, and we still won't figure it out. No, no. But we have a base of something to start with. Yeah. And then we, we, we go from there. And then we, as guides, we're expected to adjust very quickly. Sometimes it takes us all day. At the end of the day, we figure it out. And sometimes we figure it out by 9 o'clock. Yeah, you those know? are the better days. Yeah, those are better days. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so you, you're stepping into that run, and you, and I think this is a good point for any time you're swinging fight, you know, obviously they got to see it. Yeah. They got to be able to eat it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Make, it, make them see it and make it look like something and the speed of which that they can, if they want to get it, they're able to. Right. Yeah. And that's that slippery slope of if you're indicator fishing, I'd have to say the ratio, I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm thinking to as much as seven or 10 to one, you know, when you're swinging sometimes in those tough days when, when yeah. you can't, you know, it's like that yeah. much. And then there's days that it, it's almost equal. But those are less rare than our general, you know? Yeah, of that. I agree, I agree. Um, so you're stepping into a run, you fished it down through, maybe you got a fish or a grab or a pool, maybe you didn't. Um, you know, are you gonna fish that run again? How long are you gonna fish through one run? You know, what, what kind of determines how long you might spend in a spot or an area? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I, I always question myself with that too. Mm -hmm. um, so generally speaking, if I go through a run and I have some type of interest, a pluck or sure. land a fish or something like that, and if there's two anglers, um, I'll probably go through it again. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, if there's angling pressure on the weekend or something, I, and I and I know I'll be struggling to find, you know, other good runs. Sure. I'll probably go through it again. Yeah. You know, and um, I think the most I would go through a run would be. Um, three times mm -hmm. but generally speaking if I go through it twice my thought process is I'd rather cover more water and I can always revisit that run later in the day if I feel like I did like something wasn't quite right sure if it's one of your go-to spots as you know something like that yeah. absolutely absolutely so we were uh, a little bit earlier today we were on the water together doing a few things and um, we had a situation where one of the anglers felt like they were maybe getting down in the water column, but not quite, right? And, and they said, what should I do? And they were fishing a weightless fly. I said, should I change the sink tip, put on a heavier sink tip, or should I get a fly that's weighted and maybe try and get down a little bit better that way? What do you think? That's a good, another one. Um, you know, I think there's two ways to look at it. Mm -hmm. If you evaluate the water, nothing's ever black and white, is it? No, <laughs> I think if you evaluate the water, yeah. yeah. If you evaluate the water yeah. and look at it, and if you think that there's a more of a a little bit of a drastic drop off, mm -hmm. and if you if your fly is basically going to come off that drop off and it slowly drops into the you know the sweet spot, mm -hmm. I'd probably have to say I would put on a weighted fly. Yeah. You know, because then at least at that point, it'll drop faster, it'll take it down and get in there, you know, get in that ground zero zone. And it doesn't need to drop as fast. Right. Yeah. And then if you have a run that's more consistent, maybe the tail out, mm -hmm. then at that point, I'd probably say, okay, I might want to put on a little bigger tip mm -hmm. and still use that because at that point, if I put a weighted fly on, if you throw it's a little snaggy and there's a little more there, it's more broad, mm -hmm. then at that point, you know, you're getting all pricky and yeah. it just, it's not, it doesn't work real well at sure. all. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, uh, with a lot of fishing, the answer is it depends on the situation. It does. Yeah. Uh, one good tip would be um, what you call force the bottom. Yeah. So, forcing the bottom means that 
you if you're in doubt mm -hmm. what you do is after you cast and you make your mend and you start getting your swing going keep stepping in to keep stepping into your 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 swing mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you'll see it park yep. and touch and then you can start it up again it's sort of like a parking brake yeah and that you force the bottom and then you say oh I, I probably wasn't on the bottom so at that point in time you know because you should be able to almost take a step or lean into it and almost be like feel like you're going to get a snag yeah and that's that imaginary nine uh -huh. inches to ten inches off the bottom you know, I'd love to say our fish were more vertical, mm -hmm. but they don't. They, they, they're they they're gonna come and chase it, you know, more horizontal. Sure, absolutely. Um, I have one more question, and it's a, it's a term you hear a lot lately. You used it today. Um, it's been around for a long time, but people ask me a lot at the shops, like, hey, what, what's this couch water? What's couch water? You know what I mean? It, it's a great little term, but well, what's it mean for those people that don't know? So couchy water- and why is it important? It is. Yeah. Yep, so um, steelhead uh, use not only visible structure, mm -hmm. they, use they use invisible structure. Mm -hmm. The most obvious is when you have a fast current meeting the slower current, and then that they divide themselves to pay a water temperature on and off. But then you also have underwater structure mm -hmm. that causes these areas that they look like a slick. And it's basically, it's just that nice little walking speed water where when you're swinging the fly and you're like, all of a sudden it parks mm -hmm. and then you're not fishing it but the head's fishing it and it makes that perfect little pause and just crawls through and it just feels good and it feels yeah, good yeah, yeah you know but yeah. i call it the couch you water because it's like that's the place where i would sit if i was on a couch just yeah. sit there nice and cozy absolutely cool well hey i appreciate it thanks again for joining us thank you dad for the invite always man see you again soon buddy thank you man. Oh.